first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me, and uh, I must speak for all of us that uh, this is one of the best honors uh, to be invited by a student organized event. <coughs> um, I'm interested in digital technologies and human behavior in the built environment. Um, I literally like to mix and play with these elements to understand the environment to come up with solutions. Um, to illustrate this, in the next few minutes, I want to talk to you about some hybrids. This is a 75-foot cloud over Minneapolis. It is called MINI, and it senses the collective mood of the city by doing sentiment analysis. These feeds come from one mile radius circle uh, and, uh, and the cloud being in its center. It so happens that it is really to understand uh, to understand the sentiment of a collective mood of the city by analyzing a few thousand phrases. So we created an application and built a cloud that changes color, it mists, and creates a microclimate in reaction to the collective mood of the city. And it is a nice, and as a nice byproduct, it creates a very vibrant place out of what used to be an unused urban space. This is an urban empathy vortex. If any of you don't know what an urban empathy vortex is, it looks exactly like this. <laughs> it is a three-story tall wooden vortex structure on a circular patch of forgetting nuts. Uh, this is in the center, uh, in the city center of Copenhagen. It is, uh, it is being erected as we speak. Um, and um, basically, the, uh, it is uh, an attempt to understand the notion of collective empathy. Um, and this coincides uh, with the 100th anniversary of the Armenian genocide that is being commemorated this month. This is a research project on the food systems in the northern Italian city of Bergamo. This project here is to get inspired by the idea of technological glitches and what a glitch in its true meaning, of, uh, in its true meaning is. A temporary break in a system that can help, help us come up with new design ideas. Here are a few uh, GSC students, uh, Graduate School of Design students in Bergamo making ravioli. It is a piece of glass that can change its optical properties and transparencies by growing algae in its transparent channels embedded within the material itself. This is one of the series of architectural material experiments in collaboration with the live group uh, at the GSC and the Lee Institute. And this is a recent initiative in my lab. It is about understanding the genome of the built environment or the ambience of the place and what are the hidden qualities of a space are. Basically, we go to spaces and uh, we, we have a feeling of a certain uh, mood of a place, but we never, we really don't know what the differences between these spaces are. We, we can, we have intuitive feel about them, uh, but now we are at a time that we can measure these differences. And we are using off-the-shelf technologies um, such as uh, eye trackers, gaze trackers, uh, EEG, portable EEG uh, equipment, and uh, off-the-shelf uh, sensors to measure, uh, to get hard data and more subjective data about these spaces to understand, to come up with new ways to understand uh, a, a coherent way of uh, explaining the environment. So these are some of my research in my studio um, and uh, my lab uh, in the last 12 months. And as you can see, I'm interested in responsive and situated technologies as they influence and augment the built environment. But uh, what does a 75-foot cloud that senses the mood of the city and weeps and coos when it's sad or happy, an urban empathy vortex in the center 
central urban space in Copenhagen and that tries to connect the individual to the masses and understand the notion of collective empathy. A glass that creates an internal shape like growing algae. Looking at food systems in the northern Italian city through the lens of glitches, attempt to capture the ambience of the city by experimenting with new design and data-driven methods all have in common. They are all designed experiences as, and experiments in and for the physical uh, built environment that we have only become possible because of new, the new digital and information technologies. And most importantly for me, they represent a new form of design hybrids. It is not uncommon for designers to like to be in hybrid space states. As a matter of fact, it is very common for designers to put together seemingly incongruent pieces together to come up with new solutions. Good design often emerges out of friction caused by these states. But what's new and exciting is that these hybrid states are very rapidly appearing and becoming their own way of thinking. A few years ago, the engineering and business corporate world embraced the term design thinking for innovation. By the way, no designer talks about design thinking because you either design or you think. Because design is about making things and thinking is about letting your mind go different places. So design thinking is an oxymoron, but, but somehow it works because it creates a hybrid of itself. What I showed you are hybrids that cannot, cannot happen under one discipline. The more we have digital technologies getting integrated in our daily lives, these types of hybrids are going to become more and more possible and the norm. And as a byproduct of this, an exciting thing is happening as everything becomes a connected and new experiences emerge over the next few years. We will see a blurring of boundaries between established disciplines, designers, architects, technologists, social scientists, economists, engineers, policymakers, and so on. This is your time to think together. You will be able to design the experiences of the future, and the beauty of it all, you will need to think together. You will need to fuse your thoughts together. We already see in the industry the start of the role of hyphenated disciplines, the engineer designer. But soon we will have many more hybrid disciplines of this kind, the scientist designer, the economist designer, and so on. And also, as your generation, the true interdisciplinarians and hybrid makers become leaders in organizations and increasingly understand the ability of these design hybrids to expose the opportunities and understand and solve complex problems, these new hybrid designers will completely transform traditional way of working and be responsible for exposing and building new solutions to markets and the cities of the future. And the final thought on my very optimistic view of life, uh, this fusion of technology and design of environment, in addition to bringing disciplines together, this type of hybrid states will be playgrounds for allowing dynamic hierarchical structures in different organizations. Everyone will be able to contribute equally, and hopefully this will be the last missing piece in creating equality of all kinds. Thank you.